I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week and we are just rounding off the month of January 2023. Now, I don't know how this month has been for you. Now, most times people use the month of January for preparation. So you see lots of people doing one kind of fasting and prayer or the other. But it doesn't stop the blessing of God from coming to you praise god so by now you should have started seeing signs of god's blessings upon your life and that's why i want you to join us today as we call for that daily bread and release your faith as we do this join me now and say father i make a demand right now for my daily bread and i receive it now in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, remember, we've been talking about the first, the most important thing. The most important thing. Now, I, I was sharing with you um, last week concerning offerings. And I told you how important that is also. And we talked about first fruit. And you remember, we even touched on tithing. And I remember closing with telling you how it's important and how tithing is connected to your divine inheritance. Because, you see, if the Spirit of God, remember, we, we talked about the Holy Spirit being the most important thing. Now, if the Holy Spirit is in you, there are certain things He would instruct you to do. And if He has never instructed you concerning those things, it begins to raise a big question if you're truly in 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 fellowship with him or if you're truly in sync with him it's just natural see because if he's in your life he would want to bless you and if he wants to bless you there are very important things that he would put you through it's like you 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 meet a, a five-year-old child and you pick up this child and you're like, look, I'm interested in this child. I'm interested in the well-being of this child. Now, what's the first thing you would want that child to do? You want that child to go to school. Whatever form of education, whether formal or informal kind of education, you will want to put that child through a learning process. You won't see that child and say, oh, I love this child. I want to bless this child. And then you go buy a car worth 50 million for that child and say, I just want to bless you. It won't work that way. You are a fool if you do that. You understand what I'm saying? So now you are with someone and the person is telling you that, oh, I'm interested in this child. I'm interested in the progress of this child. And then, oh, wow, that's good. So what do you want to do? Say, ha, I want to open a business for the child. And the person is looking at you like, sorry, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> you understand? Now, but when you say I'm interested in this child, so what do you want to do? I, I, I want to put this child through school. So I'm looking for a kind of school that's, proximity and you start discussing all those kind of things the person you're talking to understands that you're an intelligent person and the person knows that you mean what you're saying you see that so now because you are doing that the person knows for sure that you are truly interested in this child so it's the same thing there are certain things the Holy Spirit will instruct you. And then when you talk about it, you say, wow, this is what the Holy Spirit is instructing me this year. I would know people who are spiritual will know that, wow. You, you, know, you don't have to just come and say, wow, I received some wonderful prophecies while I was praying this year. It doesn't matter the prophecies you receive. It will make no difference until you begin to receive instructions. Now, I've said this many times prophecies don't do the job they are good but they don't do the job instructions is what brings to pass the prophecies so if you just go and say wow this year god have told me he'll make me great this year god have told me i'll build my house this year god have told me i'll do this this year god have told me i'll do this this year god have told me i'll do this. say whoa wow that's wonderful but you see we may get to the end of the year and you're still like well i still believe god sha i still believe god but you see, when you tell me that the Lord told me that I should empty my bank account and give it to so-and-so person, 
Now, when you say that, now nobody, you are not saying, I went to church, pastor preached one hot message. And then he said, no, I, I was praying. And then the Lord gave me this instruction. Like, whoa. Now, any spiritual person listening to you will understand clearly that God is about to do something in your life. Why? Because they understand that this kind of instructions only come because he is interested in doing something big and good in your life. If someone comes and says, wow, do you know the Lord told me, I didn't even know that I was carrying um, uh, bitterness against my former boss. But I was praying and then God says, I have to forgive my former boss. I was wondering, but when the Lord explained it to me, now when you're talking to someone who's spiritual, the person will know that, wow, God is really interested in you for him to say that to you. You see, the kind of instructions we receive shows how depth we are walking with the Lord. If all you receive are just prophecies, prophecies, I'm with you, fear not. I'm with you, fear not. Now you know that you're dealing with a child. You know that you're dealing with a baby. At my level with walking with God, if I hear the Lord says, maybe I'm just praying, and then I hear the Lord says, son, fear not, for I am with you. Now if I hear that kind of a thing now, I would quickly understand that trouble is coming. <laughs> you see that now? I'm not going to receive that word and say, oh, wow, God is so loving. You know, he spoke to me today and he says, my son, fear not, I am with you. That's not going to be my response. Now, for a baby, that will be his response or her response. Wow, God just told me he's with me and I felt his warm hands around me. Praise <laughs> God. Now, someone like me, if I hear God say, I am with you, fear not, I automatically know that he is communicating to me, brace up. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, because he already knows that I know that he's with me. He already knows that I understand that he's with me. So he knows I don't need a reassurance. For him to come tell me that, I have sense to know that I'm about to enter or I'm about to experience something that might make me question his presence in my life. See that now? I understand it. Now, to someone, that's a prophecy. To someone who's matured, that's not a prophecy. That's an alert. That's, that's a warning. <laughs> you see that now? Now, that's how it works. So, if you walk with the Lord, there are certain instructions that you are supposed to receive from Him. So, if God has never spoken to you about giving, if God has never instructed you concerning first fruit, if God has never instructed you concerning tithing, now, tithing especially, you see, I know to a great extent, many of God's children don't still understand the purpose of tithing and how tithing is really supposed to be done. They don't understand it, so they still do the... Now, let me show you. Let me show you something. Now, let's go to the popular scripture on tithing. And you know where that is? Malachi. Malachi. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Malachi. Malachi is a prophet. Malachi chapter 3. Now look at verse 8. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. It says, Will a man rob God? Now this is, the, this is God speaking to a prophet Malachi. He said, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. Now, God was saying these words, not a prophet saying it on his behalf. He was speaking through the prophet. See that now? Now he says, will a man rob God? So God literally asked that question. And then God literally said, you have robbed me. How is it possible to rob God? But not the same thing they say. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? And this was his response. In tithes and offerings. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. If you are not involved with tithing, you are robbing God. Oh, it's Old Testament, but we are now in the New Testament. Now, that's one of the, the, funny, uh, the funny reasonings that you find in Christendom. 
I have, I've always said this, you know. Now, lack of understanding is a big thing. It's a big thing. <laughs> okay, now let's look at this now. God says you have robbed him. And because you have robbed him, say you are cursed with a cost. No, in the New Testament, we are not cursed. Okay. <laughs> oh, dear Lord Jesus. How do you read? How do you read? If you are blessed, there is a way your life will go. Whether in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. If you are cursed, there is a way your life will go. Whether in the New Testament or in the Old Testament. Oh, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Ah, here you go, brother. See, you know, I've done several teachings on, on all these things. And so, that's why I say just sometimes, you know, when you're a child, just go to our YouTube channel and, and just look at titles and, and read for your, uh, or listen for yourself. Now, Oh, her shaky medihidi. Now look at that step. Let's let's go to let me let's not get distracted. It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. It. God says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. Now, that's what I want to talk about now. What does it mean, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse? Now, you see, realize this, that when God is speaking, he's not just speaking in, in, in natural terms. I've always said this, God is eternal. So when he speaks, his word is from eternity. And to understand him, you need to elevate your thoughts. You need to elevate your thinking process. Now, when I mean elevating your thinking, I'm trying to do something super, so, so, so superstitious or supernatural. I'm just saying, just compare scriptures with scriptures. Now, God says, bring ye all the tithe into my storehouse. He says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse so that there will be meat in my house question then is where is the storehouse what does it mean when he says so that there will be meat in my house now because of these people have reasoned it out and say oh bring all the tithe to the church because the church is the storehouse of god now people try to argue that and say ah you know all kind of thing now let me put this in plain terms to you you remember Jesus said, do not lay up treasure here on earth. See, Jesus said, don't lay up treasure here on earth. Rather, he says, lay it in heaven. So he says, there is, there is instead of laying treasure on earth, lay it in heaven. So he's telling you that you can actually lay treasures in heaven. And he actually said, don't do it on earth. Now, Jesus would not give us a command or instruction or an advice that is against the command of God, right? So if Jesus is saying, don't lay up treasure here on earth, and then here he says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. Common sense. Now, when I mean common sense, I mean common spiritual sense should begin to make you think deeper to know that there should be something here. So, if I'm not supposed to lay treasure here on earth, why am I commanded to bring the tithe to a physical storehouse here on earth? Now that should elevate your thinking. And I want you to understand this from me. Tithes, the tithe actually belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to any church. It doesn't belong to anybody physical. The tithe solely belongs to the Lord. I talked to you about first fruit, and I told you God gave a command that the first fruit it should be given to the priests. It belongs to the priests. You don't give the first fruit to any other. You don't give your first fruit to a widow. You don't give your first fruit to a, a motherless baby zone or an organization. You give the first fruit to the priest. You give it to your pastor. You give it to your man of God. 
And he says it's because so that he, that's what God says, he will cause the blessing to rest in your house. But then when, you, when it comes to tithing, tithing belongs to God. Now that's why God says, prove me now and see if I will not open. In first food, he said the priest will cause the blessing to rest in your house. Are you seeing the difference now? Now that's why when you give your first food, you have to give it to someone you trust in his prayer. You have to give it to someone you know can flow with the Lord because he is going to cause the blessing to rest in your heart. If you don't trust the word of God in his mouth, then you're wasting your money. It's as simple as that. Now then, in tithing, he says, when you tithe, I, God, will cause the windows of heaven, will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. So it is his responsibility because he takes ownership of the tithe. Now, that I've, I've always said this to God's children, as many as will list it. Now, listen, if God claims ownership to the tithe, then how does he receive it? You see that now? Now, no assumptions here, because when you're dealing with God, now that's what I was telling you, the more you, you do something, remember he says, God is a spirit, and those that worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. The more you worship him faithfully, the more he begins to teach you more. The more he begins to help you serve him in a more perfect way. See? Now that's why whatever you are doing, your spirit must be engaged in it. Because if your spirit is engaged in it, you will be asking a lot of questions. And you will get to that point where man will not be able to teach you again. <laughs> Praise God. The Holy Spirit himself will become your teacher. Yeah. So if God claims ownership of the tithe how do we give it to him very simple he is not dumb he is not deaf the god we speak about today is a speaking spirit where is god so he is talking he is always talking now this is how we have come into covenant with him as his children and jesus said my sheep hears my voice and because I am a sheep, I will hear his voice. Now, if I hear his voice and I have his money, which is 10% of every blessing that he has blessed me with. Now, he said 10%, he didn't say 20%. See that now? Now, anything else you want to do is out of your own zeal. It doesn't mean you'll be more blessed than the other person. No, sir. You see that now? It's every man that strives must strive lawfully. To understand that. So now, I take out his 10% when I'm blessed, when I receive whatever I receive. I take out his 10% because I recognize that this blessing is from him. So when I take that out, what do I do? I take it to him because I believe in him that he's alive, he is not deaf, he is not dumb. I go before him and say, Lord, I've got your money with me. So what would you have me do with it? And he will speak to me and tell me, son, this is where I want you to put that money into use. This is where I want you to send that money to. Now, when he speaks like that and I obey him, brothers and sisters, he has received the tithe from my hands and my time is up. Praise God. Oh, we give you praise, Father. You, you are teaching us this year the most important thing. And you are bringing us up to speed to where we'll serve you in a more perfect way and receive the blessing perfectly from you. Thank you, Father. I pray you minister truth to every heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, tomorrow is the last day of the month. And hey, I'll talk to you about this tomorrow. But prepare for our fasting and prayer on the first of every month. God bless you. See you tomorrow.